<laughs> Listen, my first guest is a self-made millionaire that knows a thing or two about becoming a brand. She is a business coach, author, and podcast host who advocates for entrepreneurs to share the test of their testimonials using their informative, authentic encounters. Y'all, please help me welcome the one and only Miss Natalie Nicole! <laughs> Fabulous. Come on now. How are you, darling? I am blessed and so grateful to be here. We are blessed as well, and we are so happy to have you here with us. We were talking a little bit in the back, and you have some powerful things to share with us. <laughs> Y'all, she is more than just beauty. She is brains. She is brilliant. And we want to just jump in. Yes. So talk to us about being a self-made millionaire. Well, first, I want to say just when people say that word, mm -hmm. I, I love it. Because it's, 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 it's empowering, but I'm a God-made millionaire. Come on. You know, I believe that we've been taught that money, you know, helps us navigate our life. Mm -hmm. But truly, God gave us money as a vessel to be able to help others. Amen. And to be able to create legacy and to be able to feel real freedom here on earth. Because we're supposed to have heaven on earth, right? Yes. So God allowed me to not only make one million, but my first year earning a million dollars, he gave me four. Come on you now. Know? He gave me four. You so, know what they say, won't he do it? He did it. He'll he did do it for it. all And of he'll us. do it for yes. everybody. Yes. Yes. So it feels good because I feel like I was chosen to show the world that it's possible. Yes, because you were going through some things. So listen, yes. you shared that you were once robbed at gunpoint. That's horrible. Please talk to us about being robbed at gunpoint. Was this after somebody found out that you were a self-made millionaire? Listen. That's why I'd be scared to announce all that kind of you stuff. Know, it's just like, my goodness, that's scary. <laughs> I tried to be like an investigator and <gasps> figure things out, but it came to the point in my life where I realized that in that season, I was able to experience a lot of success, mm -hmm. but sometimes we get caught up. Mm -hmm. And then I became far removed from reality mm. because the way I was moving that day, that wasn't God's ordering my steps. Mm. That was Natalie doing what she wanted to do that mm. day because it was broad daylight. Mm -hmm. So just to circle back, um, I was in the season of my life where I was just moving really fast. Mm -hmm. I was checking out a venue that day and I remember like it was yesterday. The guys had a mask on and not only was I robbed at gunpoint in a fetal position, I was robbed of my confidence. Mm. I was robbed yes. of my fearlessness. Yes. I was robbed of my brand. Mm. So that moment redefined Natalie Nicole and I literally had to rebrand myself. Wow. And I believe that that situation happened for me to show the world that regardless if you're high or you're low, you can get back up again. Amen. They say fall down seven, get up eight. Exactly. Eight, right? eight, eight them up. <laughs> eight up. Eight up. I love it. Listen, so let's talk about your best selling book, Becoming a Brand. Yes. So in 2019, as I embarked in the in my career in, in network marketing, mm -hmm. a lot of women and men will come to me like, well, how did you build your brand? How did you mm -hmm. build your brand? So from Howard University to my salon to just like even being a makeup artist and a hairstylist, mm -hmm. one of the things that has always held weight was my character and my name. Yes. It's powerful. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I had to really find a creative way of sharing the truth about how to build your brand. Mm -hmm. It's not just about how many times you post on social media. It's not about paying a marketing expert. All those, those, those things do help with the process, but it goes back to your foundation and who you are, whose you are, mm -hmm. and who do you want to become. Yes. So becoming a brand is me sharing the core values and the principles of discovering who you are as a brand mm -hmm. and making sure that you stay in that space so you don't get sidetracked right. with all the flashy things in life. That's so true. And something very unique that you do with your clients is that you leverage their personal stories I do. for their brands. How do you do that? And what made you decide to use that as your focal point? So as a child and even as a younger entrepreneur, 
uh, people used to tell me I was all over the place mm -hmm. because I'll get really excited about stuff and I'll start this and I'll start this mm -hmm. and then I won't finish it. But I'll be really, my, my intention was Your really Your intentions are, I'm going to do it. Right? Yes. And I realized that when I'm becoming a brand and a purposeful brand, you got to go back to the root of the intention of why you're doing what you're doing. Yes. So if you're doing it just to please others or to make a name or for ego, mm. it's not going to work at all. So the reason why your story and your narrative is so important because when you don't feel like going moving forward and you don't feel like waking up that day and mm -hmm. going hard and grinding, mm -hmm. your why, what hurts you, what pains you, what keeps you going is going to fuel your dreams and your goals and your brand. So your narrative and why you do what you do is like the premise of building a brand. That is so true. That is so true. So would you please talk to our viewers, Natalie, about not just making money, but how do you keep it? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> it's, you can make it, but how do you keep it? Financial literacy. So financial literacy is very important to me. And mm -hmm. I believe, again, my story is a living testament of that. Because mm -hmm. after I got robbed, um, I, I, I looked at money as evil, honestly. I did, I too, did. before. Mm -hmm. I did. And mm -hmm. I realized that was just the enemy trying to play tricks mm -hmm. on my mind because money, again, is a vehicle. Correct. So... When you move properly in an impactful way and you allow God to order your steps and allow him to lead you, mm -hmm. you now can use your money for good. So for two years, I was in a very dark place, mm -hmm. but I was able to keep money coming in. I have a residual income. I was able to make another $3 million mm -hmm. in a depression. You know? Wow. It, that, listen, God is good. And he, well, they say just like musicians and singers, we write the best songs when we are in the deepest, lowest I, parts of I, our life. I did. And you made the most money when you were in the deepest, darkest parts of I just slowed down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was able to like focus on Natalie mm -hmm. and self-care and mental health mm -hmm. and just understanding my real purpose. So to answer your question... Every dollar that you make is not yours. Everyone lives by different principles, mm -hmm. but I live by a principle called what to do with a dollar. And the reason why I honor money is because, one, God gave it to me. And then, two, money is supposed to be recycled and reused mm -hmm. and reinvested. Mm -hmm. So, of course, ties and offering. Yes. I'm going to put 10% ties and offering wherever you're getting your spiritual, you know, awakening from, whoever's mm -hmm. enriching your, whether it's church online, whether it's yes. physical church. Tie where, where the fertile seeds, and you know, you're mm -hmm. gonna plant it there. Yes. So then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure my bills are not higher than 15 to 20 percent. Mm -hmm. If you are making money, but your bills are, are higher, higher than. than what you're making, we have to go back to the drawing board and we have that conversation. Yes. And at one point in my life, I was living above my means. Yes. And I wasn't making enough. We income. all do it at some point, right. don't we, y'all? Sometimes, right? Sometimes. Sometimes right? we do it. Yes. And it's okay. But then you And it's okay. You, you bring it back in. <laughs> yes. And whether you're paying all these consultants and contractors Correct. and all these different things. Because all that stuff looks good, mm -hmm. but if you're not making the money, Correct. you have to say, you know what, not now. Exactly. I'm, I'm revisit. Exactly. So the next one was savings. Mm -hmm. And of course, you want to put some money on the side for your taxes. Yes. Get a good, you know, uh, CPA, yes. accountant. And you would say, put about 30% away I'll for put taxes, y'all. 30%. 30%. Make sure you're paying every exactly. quarter. Yes. And then reinvestment. Yes. Always reinvestment. That goes mm -hmm. into like your branding. That goes into your marketing. That goes into just maybe it's a conference, an mm -hmm. event that you want to go to. Mm -hmm. So this is something I've been living. I live by these principles for about seven years now. And it has sustained you well. It has sustained me and we very thank well. you so much for sharing thank your you. secret with us. We're gonna take a short break. We'll be right back. Don't y'all go nowhere. Miss